Are you tired of being in another area of the country and you meet somebody new and they come up to you and they say, oh, you must be from, and then they name the city that you actually are from. The only way that they know this is probably that you have a regional accent and they have tuned into that. Now, most of my clients don't like that, especially if the regional accent has a negative perception associated with it. In this episode, you're going to learn six ways to neutralize your regional accent. Hi, my name is Linda Waltner Stuckey. You know, getting rid of a regional accent can be a really difficult task that requires a lot of concentration and a lot of focus and effort. Accents of any kind have positive or negative perceptions associated with them. Some sound elite and high class and others may have a perception of being uneducated or not very smart. Where I live in Pittsburgh, there is a regional accent called Pittsburghese. And it is a, an accent that generally doesn't have a very positive perception associated with it. So why is it so hard to change a regional accent? Well, if this is something that you've grown up with, just like any other habit that you're trying to change, it's probably pretty ingrained in your head or your brain. And that brings us to the first reason why it's hard. There is conditioning or neural pathways that create habits that are deeply ingrained in our brain's neural pathways through repetition and reinforcement. When we perform a habit, it triggers a familiar neural pathway, making it easy for us to repeat that behavior without much conscious thought. And over time, these neural pathways become stronger, making it even more challenging to break away from that habit and create new pathways. The second reason why it's hard to change a habit is because of comfort and familiarity. Habits provide a sense of comfort and familiarity. Even if the habit is detrimental or unproductive, it can still feel reassuring because it's something you're used to. Stepping out of that comfort zone and trying something new can create anxiety and uncertainty, which makes it really difficult to change that habit. The third reason is emotional and psychological attachment. Habits often have psychological and emotional attachments. They may be associated with certain rewards such as pleasure or stress relief, or they may serve as coping mechanisms. Breaking a habit means disrupting these attachments, which can lead to discomfort or emotional distress. The fourth reason why it's difficult to break a habit is because there is a lack of immediate gratification. This couldn't be more true with changing a habit about your speech. Many habits, of course, offer immediate rewards or gratification, while the benefits of changing a habit are often delayed or not as noticeable in the short term. Our brains are wired to seek immediate rewards, making it really challenging to choose long-term benefits over instant gratification. In speech especially, when you are trying to communicate something at the same time you're trying to change a habit, it can really be difficult and require a lot of focus. The fifth reason it's difficult to change a habit is because of our willpower and our self-control. Willpower is a finite resource that can be depleted throughout the day. It's exhausting to try to focus on something about your, your speech and communication throughout the day. If you are already using a significant amount of willpower in other areas of your life, it becomes more challenging to exert the self-control necessary to change a habit. And the sixth reason is environmental and social influences. Our habits are influenced by our environment and the people around us. If the environment or the social circles that we are in continue to reinforce the old habit, it becomes more and more challenging to change. I find with some of my clients who are trying to remove Pittsburghese, for example, 
in their work setting that it is especially different to go outside of that work setting where their friends are in, in social settings and, and try to make those changes at that point also. Changing a habit successfully requires understanding of these challenges and then implementing new strategies, such as setting clear goals, breaking the habit into smaller pieces, manageable pieces, uh, finding alternative rewards, uh, creating a supportive environment, and practicing self-compassion. Just because you know what you need to change, it's not that easy. And so it's important that you are patient and persistent as you break and establish new habits. Let's talk about how to get rid of a regional accent. Here are some ways to do that. Number one, it all begins with awareness. Of course, awareness is very, very important because if you don't have awareness, how can you change a habit? Becoming aware of the way in which you speak is the first necessary step. I often ask my clients to purchase a book or go to a website that explains a regional accent. Then you can start to pay attention to your own speech. A book that I love that I think is very important for people who are speaking Pittsburghese is a book by Sam Cool, and it's called Pittsburghese, How to Speak Like a Pittsburgher. It's really a fun and lighthearted book. It shows and talks about all the words and their definitions in this regional accent, Pittsburghese. So I ask my clients to go to this book, read it, and find out what of those words are kind of familiar that they know and use quite frequently so that they can become aware of those words in their own conversation. And to my surprise, sometimes my clients didn't even realize that certain words that are in this Pittsburghese book are even a part of Pittsburghese. They have become so accustomed to using that word that they are surprised. The second thing is to listen to neutral speakers. Try to listen to people who speak with more neutral or standardized American accents, such as news anchors or actors, and pay attention to their pronunciation and intonation. Most broadcasters have had coaching of some sort to help them create a more neutralized accent. The third important way that you can neutralize your accent is to record yourself and listen to yourself speaking. Now, it's best if you can record a conversation that you're having with someone. You could record your end of a conversation on the telephone so that you can go back and listen to the words that you have used in this conversation. Now, I recommend that you do at least a five or 10 minute sample of your speech so that you can really get a feel for the words that you are using in conversation. The next way is to practice pronunciation. Focus on pronouncing words in a more standard American way. Work on the vowel sounds, especially such as ah and o. Oh. These are often mispronounced in a regional accent. The next way is to use language learning apps. Language learning apps can be really helpful. Take a test and find out that you are mispronouncing some of the words according to a standard way of speaking. So one that I enjoy a lot is called Native Accent. You can take a test online and it will tell you which sounds you are mispronouncing. So for example, in some regional accents, they clip the endings of words. So if you are clipping words, this will show up on this assessment. If you are mispronouncing vowels, this will also show up on the assessment. In, in Pittsburghese, there is a diphthong, the ow sound, which is commonly mispronounced, and that will be picked up on the evaluation as well. I'll leave a link below so that you can go read more about it and see if it's something that you would like to purchase to help you overcome mispronunciations of sounds. The last way to help you overcome a regional accent is to work with a speech coach. A speech coach can identify the exact 
words and sounds that you are using that could be changed so that you have more standard sounding speech. So I would definitely recommend a speech coach if it's an overwhelming task for yourself to, to, to try to figure out. Finally, I'd like to say that it's really important to recognize that it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a regional accent. Accents are a natural part of your identity and can be an important aspect of your cultural heritage. However, if you're looking to modify your accent for professional or even personal reasons, these tips can help you achieve a more neutral American accent with some practice and with the dedication it will probably take. If you want to learn more about regional accents, another episode I made was what factors into a regional accent. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, post your comments below so that I can hear more about what's on your mind. Thank you.